Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, looking back, the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965 turned out to be one of the most significant pieces of legislation ever passed by the U.S. Congress. Now, the people who wrote it knew that it would be, so naturally they spent a lot of time trying to convince everyone else that, in fact, it was no big deal. This is not a revolutionary bill, assured Lyndon Johnson when he signed it. The first tip that it was, in fact, a revolutionary bill. And then there was this. On the Senate floor, Ted Kennedy of Massachusetts, the man who drove the bill, went out of his way to explain that the Democratic Party was absolutely not trying to replace the American population with more compliant foreign-born voters. No way. That's an insane conspiracy theory, he explained. Quote, this bill will not flood our cities with immigrants, Kennedy said. It will not upset the ethnic mix of our society. It will not relax the standards of admission. It will not cause American workers to lose their jobs. <laughs> it's all bitterly amusing when you look back at it because, of course, that is precisely what this bill did. This bill changed America completely and forever. And the numbers show it. In the years since that legislation passed, the United States' total population exploded by... 140 million people. You're seeing that chart on your screen right now. What direction does it point? Well, steadily upward. That's the population. Now, where did all those people come from? There's nothing wrong with more people. The question is, who are they and where do they come from? Well, what you're seeing is not the kind of organic growth that you would see in a healthy society that's become more prosperous and welcoming of families. It's not like people were so confident in the future they decided to have more kids. No, it's just the opposite, exactly the opposite of that. In fact, since Ted Kennedy's bill became law, birth rates among native-born Americans, which are the clearest possible measure of optimism in the future, those have dropped off a cliff. And you're seeing that chart on the screen now. It's the inverse of the first chart. This chart points downward. In 2020, the most recent year for which we have data, the overall fertility rate in the United States hit the lowest point ever recorded. And that was before COVID. This country is now well under the so-called replacement level. That means if we continue on this trajectory, and no one's trying to take us off this trajectory, eventually there'll be no more native-born Americans. So you put these two graphs together, and what do they show you? Well, they show you a number of things, but here's the main one. Sometime around 1965, our leaders stopped trying to make the United States a hospitable place for American citizens, their constituents, to have their own families. That used to be considered the central task of leadership, perpetuating the population. If people are happy and confident, they'll have kids. They're vested in the society, and if they're not, they won't. That was their job. So they stopped doing it, and instead they just imported new people. That's literally what happened. Now, you're not allowed to point this out, of course. The media become absolutely hysterical when you do because it's so obviously true. What's interesting is that if something like this happened in any other country, say in China or Japan or Nigeria, the populations of those countries would likely revolt because you can't do that. The leaders of a country can't change the population of the country, especially in a democracy, without the consent of the existing population. So if those populations in, say, Nigeria, for example, revolted, the New York Times would be deeply sympathetic to their outrage. Again, you can't just replace the electorate because you didn't like the last election outcomes. That would be the definition of undermining democracy, changing the voters. But when it happens in this country, there is mandatory media-enforced silence. And in fact, if you notice it's happening, it's your fault. You're immoral. You're a racist. But it has nothing to do with race. It's about change, and it's absolutely real. The majority of population growth since 1965 has come from immigration, not from Americans having more kids. In 1965, the number of permanent illegal migrants in this country from Latin America was essentially zero. There were migrant farm workers, but there were no huge populations of people living here illegally. By 2008, that number had grown to perhaps 20 million people. They lied about it, but the best estimates suggest it was tens of millions. And then came Joe Biden. Joe Biden accelerated that sad trend beyond what anyone thought was possible. The foreign-born population is now growing by 132,000 people every month. That's more than triple the average high under previous administrations. It's double Barack Obama's highest totals. According to AEI scholar Mark Perry, we can expect over 9 million new illegal aliens by the end of Joe Biden's first term. Nothing like this has ever happened in this or maybe any other country ever. 
And it's happening for one reason. It's not natural. It's the product of a policy choice. Joe Biden promised amnesty to anyone who makes it across our border. So in 2019, for example, the Trump administration criminally prosecuted 110,000 illegal migrants for violating immigration law. Not that they were bad people. Some of them were great people. But you're not allowed to go into someone else's country without permission. That's what a law is. And if you ignore the law, you are no longer a real country. You're something less than that. You're a failed state. So you have to enforce the law, including immigration law. But Joe Biden stopped doing it. Last year, Joe Biden prosecuted fewer than 3,000 total. That's according to DHS data obtained by the Washington Free Beacon. That's a drop of nearly 98%. So naturally, people are coming. Because why wouldn't you want to move to the United States? Knowing that when you get here, you will be treated like someone who deserves to be here and given every possible public benefit. You'd be crazy not to come. And so they are in massive numbers. And then traveling, often at public expense, paid for by you without your knowledge, throughout the United States. What's one border agent explain what exactly is happening? DPS officers have been assisting Border Patrol under Operation Lone Star for 16 months. In that time, they've apprehended 279,000 undocumented migrants, arrested 17,000 criminals, and seized nearly 320 million lethal doses of fentanyl. Every state has become a border state because all these individuals that are coming across, aside from the families, the single adults, the gotaways, the drugs that are coming in are going to other states. They're not staying in Texas. So that's Mexico over there, so they'll come across. They'll bring them across on a raft. And they usually have 30, 40 you know, immigrants on these rafts. They're bringing them across. They know where to drop them off, and they know where to walk. So here's another thing that's changed since 1965, along with our population. Politicians no longer feel they need to pretend, partly because the population is so different. You've got a lot more people with permanent jobs in American politics. So unlike Lyndon Johnson, Joe Biden didn't pretend that his goal was not to change the population. He said it out loud. During the campaign, Biden referred to illegal immigration as a gift. Watch. Guess what? They're the reason why the legal as well as undocumented. They're the reason why our society is functioning. The reason why our economy is growing. We don't talk about that. We stand up and act like it's a burden. It is not a burden. It's a gift. It's a gift, says a man who has worked in a public job his entire life, who's never had a real job ever, is lecturing you about the economy and how it works, as if he knows. By the way, in that tape, Joe Biden was so senile that his wife and his handlers gave him drugs before that interview, that interview that you just saw. So that's the guy telling you about the economic benefits of illegal immigration. Now, mostly you're not supposed to notice that that conversation even took place, just like you're not supposed to notice when the New York Times prints an op-ed called, We Can Replace Them, because that's a dangerous conspiracy theory. What are you, Alex Jones? No, we just watch carefully. Not even that carefully. They say it constantly. The Great Replacement? Yeah, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's their electoral strategy, and we know that because they say it all the time. Here are some examples. Blue Wave is African American. Yeah. It's white, it's Latino, it's Asian Pacific Islander. Yes. It is made up of those who've been told that they are not worthy of being here. Yes. It is comprised of those who are documented and undocumented. In a couple of presidential cycles, you'll be on election night, you'll be announcing that we're calling the 38 electoral votes of Texas for the Democratic nominee for president. It's changing, it's gonna become a purple state and then a blue state because of the demographics. The demographics of America are not on the side of the Republican Party. The new voters in this country are moving away from them. And instead, they're moving to be independents or to even vote on the other side. An unrelenting stream of immigration, nonstop, nonstop. Folks like me who were Caucasian of European descent for the first time in 2017 will be in an absolute minority in the United States of America. Absolute minority. Fewer than 50% of the people in America from then and on will be white European stock. That's not a bad thing. That's a, that's a source of our strength. 
So how is that a source of our strength? He, he never explained. So clearly it's a source of the Democratic Party's strength, they believe, though actually that plan might not work out for them since a lot of the people arriving may not be sympathetic to Joe Biden, who possibly could be. But electoral politics are really secondary to the real concern, which is the stability of the country. So the problem with what the Democratic Party is doing right now is not simply that it helps the Democratic Party, though we think that's bad. The problem is that they're doing it way too fast. This is too much change at once for any society ever at any point in history. No society can metabolize this many new people and stay stable, especially not now in this specific moment, because two unprecedented waves of human migration, you have to add, let's see, a collapsing economy, inflation, food shortages, skyrocketing housing prices, falling wages, the trauma of two and a half years of COVID, the manufactured racial strife you saw Joe Biden himself encouraging. You put all that together and you have the most volatile possible mix of social factors. So into that, you throw millions of brand new people who have no connection to America whatsoever, people who broke our laws to get here, who don't speak our language, who have no idea what the U.S. Constitution says and don't care. And what do you have when you put all of that together? You have a recipe for social collapse. This is why no sane government would ever do this. The Chinese government would never consider doing this. Even corrupt, dumb governments that can't even keep a national airline flying would never do something like this to their own countries because they don't want their own countries to collapse. And it's not an attack on the people coming here, by the way, some of whom are legitimately great people and want to be here for the right reasons. The problem is the volume. No country can withstand what we're going through right now. And in our specific case, it turns out that a lot of the people coming are not ready to participate in a democracy. A huge percentage of the migrants crossing the border today are functionally illiterate. According to the Center for Immigration Studies, 41% of immigrants score at or below the lowest level of English literacy, a level variously described as below basic or functionally illiterate. Now, add to this the problems that American-born people are having with English after two years of COVID and suspended education and a life spent staring into a screen. What does that look like? A lot of people who are moving here are not becoming assimilated. And we know that because many haven't learned English after living here for years. The same study found that 67% of Hispanic immigrants do not develop English proficiency even after 15 years of living in the United States. That means around 5 million migrants became citizens without even being able to speak our language. Once again, not an attack on them, an attack on the people running the country. This could capsize the United States, this is a huge, sprawling country with a massive population. So the question from day one has always been, what holds everyone together? What is the one thing we all have in common? It's not an ethnic group. It's not a shared history. Now it's not a language. So what is it? Well, in the absence of glue, things break apart. That's a physics principle. So no one who cared about the future of this country would do this to the country. It is truly insanity. And yet the Biden administration is trying to make it worse, working hard to make it worse. Fox News is reporting tonight that the administration awarded a $172 million grant to a George Soros-linked organization which exists to, quote, help young border crossers avoid deportation. Now, why is some foreign-born billionaire allowed to change our country fundamentally? That's the big question. Here are the specifics. This organization is called the Vera Institute for Justice, and it stands to gain a billion dollars in federal money by the end of the contract, just to subvert our laws. Now, the catch is that no one verifies whether the people crossing the border are actually minors. Right? You can't know who they are. By definition, they're here illegally. And after 9-11, didn't we care about the authenticity of documents? Didn't we have a Real ID Act? But we don't know how old they are. And that's how 24-year-old Medina Uloa was able to enter this country and murder a father of four in the backyard of his house in Florida in October. He posed as a child so that Joe Biden would fly him at your expense to Jacksonville in the middle of the night. So courtesy of the Biden administration, unaccompanied minors like Medina Uloa are also arriving in New York, in Texas, Louisiana, Tennessee, and Arizona, and many other places. 
According, for example, to 12 News in Phoenix, representatives for Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport reported that hundreds of migrants showed up recently with no booked tickets. Roughly three to 400 refugees have arrived every single day by bus in recent months. So why are all of these illegal aliens arriving in Phoenix? Well, many of them were dropped off by a nonprofit called RCBH, which brags it's helped nearly 20,000 illegal aliens released by immigration authorities without charges, moving all over the country. And that's where it's happening, all over the country. In Brownsville, Texas, Fox News observed buses contracted by the Biden administration dropping off dozens of male migrants at a parking garage. Our reporters witnessed those migrants go into an unmarked office, then get picked up by taxi cabs and driven to the airport. None of them were children. Commercial airline pilots right now are being told to fly these people all over the country. We spoke to a pilot who's doing it every day, and we're quoting, we are breaking the law, transporting illegals, many of whom are unaccompanied minors. Why is this continuing? Because neither party is interested in stopping it. On this question, as on foreign policy, there's only one party, the Uniparty, and it's aligned against your most basic interests, no matter what color you are, by the way. Instead, both parties are finding new ways to give American jobs to foreign-born applicants. 62 Republicans just joined to their eternal shame with almost every single Democrat in the House to pass the National Defense Bill. Now, tucked away in that $840 billion piece of legislation is a plan to give away even more American jobs to foreign workers, as if we need this now. So now the children of H-1B visa workers will receive citizenship because their parents took jobs in this country? Huh? How does that work exactly? Shut up! racist. Again, it's not about race. It's about economics and social cohesion, both of which they're destroying. Now, according to our Congress, fewer jobs for Americans somehow makes this country safer. That's been their plan since 1965. And since 1965, both parties have supported it. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.